About a week ago, I made a video titled The Dark Psychology of the Subconscious Mind and How to Integrate It. And in that video, I criticized Stoicism a little bit about having things in it that sound good on paper, but in reality cannot be realistically attained. Then this one person commented that Stoicism is drenched in idealism. That's why pragmatism can't get a hold of it. Now, I both agree and disagree with this comment. First of all, pragmatism, according to Google, is an approach that evaluates theories or beliefs in terms of the success of their practical application. Essentially, this person says that Stoicism is too focused on the ideal and less focused on the practicality. Although there are things in Stoicism that are idealized, from my experience, Stoicism is one of the most practical philosophies in the world. That's one of the reasons why people love it. It's practical and simple. You pretty much never need to read any of the ancient Stoic books like a novel, and you can just turn to any page and find one quote, one sentence, one paragraph that you can just instantly take and apply it in your life. That's why Marcus Aurelius Meditations is the book that single-handedly elevated my life. And I still read it pretty much daily as a way to remember those practical lessons and still to just apply them in my life. With all of that said, I now believe that Stoicism is extremely wrong about this one major part of human existence emotions. Of course, Stoicism does not say to ignore emotions like many people who are not familiar with Stoicism think, but Stoicism does really put rationality above everything else. Whilst I believe that rationality is a bit higher than emotions, it's irrational to ignore irrationality as much as Stoicism tends to ignore it. I think that's when Stoicism becomes too ideal to attain. Marcus Aurelius once said that the best answer to anger is silence. Is it? Nowadays, we know that the subconscious exists and the unexpressed emotions get buried down in that subconscious and later on come back even stronger. Now, this doesn't mean that we need to express emotions like children without thinking and at the expense of everyone else. But I believe there is a civilized way to feel emotions and understand them and kind of create a harmony between rationality and irrationality. If you've been on my channel recently, you might have noticed my increased focus on the emotion topic. And it's all because I started reading this book, Letting Go by David Hawkins. I will most likely make a full video on this book because it really did change the way I view emotions. I always subscribed to that stoic ideal of always putting rationality above everything else. But now I think that you need both of these things, both emotions and rationality to function properly. David Hawkins in this book explains the letting go method. And it's pretty much when you notice a negative feeling, you focus on that feeling without any intention of wanting it to go away and it pretty much goes away by itself. It pretty much makes you actually feel the emotion instead of just ignoring it and uh, once the emotion returns stronger later on, paying that price of being rational in the moment. Now the letting go method sounds simple, so why write a whole book about it, about something that can be explained in a few sentences? Well, I thought the same, but pretty much this whole book goes in pretty much, I think, every kind of human emotion in detail, and it makes it easier to understand it and let go of that emotion if needed. If you can feel, understand, then you can actually rationally come up with the solutions to those problems that cause those emotions. And that's what I want you to take away from this video. Don't get too caught up in the ideal of your philosophy because ideal will always be perfect and you will never be perfect. Always be going towards that ideal, but approach it realistically and don't forget don't just neglect your emotions as that's an extremely big part of you because you are human. I'll end it with this part of the letting go book that I found kind of beautiful in a way. It's from chapter five of the book about sadness. David Hawkins explains how repressed sadness creates an undesirable existence in the world and this repression usually happens in men because according to David Hawkins, uh, to cry by today's society standards, to cry for men is not manly. But once a man faces that sadness and feels that emotion, allowing himself to cry, he then kind of just feels better because he allowed himself to let go of this sadness, of this emotion. This doesn't mean that you should cry every time and anywhere when you experience negative emotions. But once you are alone, once you allow yourself to kind of just spend that time alone, kind of actually feeling the feelings, 
then you can just allow yourself to cry and kind of get this weight off your heart and carry on. So hopefully you guys take some time to think about actually starting to feel emotions instead of always running away from them like I always did. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below of just what did you think about all of this video and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more weekly, now pretty much daily self-improvement videos and if you would want to support the channel and me, uh, you can do that by donating to me on my PayPal or um on my patreon that are in the description down below and on patreon if you support me there you get exclusive access to our discord community so you can do that thank you for watching this video and as always stay on your journey